Crude oil is a complex mixture of substances. Crude oil can be separated into useful fractions by fractional distillation. Figure 7 shows a fractional distillation column and the fractions produced when a sample of crude oil is distilled. So a fractional distillation, remember, crude oil comes in with its mixture of hydrocarbons. It gets heated until each of the chemicals boils, enters as a gas, a mixture of hydrocarbons as a gas and as you can see there's a gradient a temperature gradient here where it's cooler at the top and hotter at the bottom the uh, hydrocarbons with the longest chain lengths condense at the bottom where they have the highest spawning points so at this point it's still hot enough to keep them as a gas but as they rise they condense as it gets a little bit cooler they become a liquid but at the top it's still very hot for some of the smaller chain lengths so it's still a gas until they reach the top where they condense. So as you go at the, to the top, you find fractions with smaller cha carbon chains. The properties of these fractions vary from the top of the column to the bottom of the column. Which of the following is a trend in property of fractions obtained from the top of the column to those obtained from the bottom? The average number of carbon atoms in the molecules present decreases uh, from top to bottom. No, it's the other way around. The easy ignition increases it's from top to bottom. No, it's easier to ignite smaller molecules. So that's the reverse of that would be true. The boiling point decreases. No, again, the reverse of that is true. The viscosities increase. That's true. So in other words, if you go up, basically, as these become smaller, or rather, if you go down, like the question saying, as you go smaller, um, these become harder and harder to ignite because there's more, they're, they're bigger molecules, you need more energy to ignite them. Um, they become, their boiling point gets greater as you go down, but they do become thicker, more viscous, so that is true. Most substances in crude oil are alkanes. Which of the following is the general formula for an alkane? An alkane is something like this. Without a double bond, you just have carbon and hydrogen. So these are both hydrocarbons, alkenes here with a double bond, but alkanes. So if you count the number of carbons and hydrogens, two carbons here, one, two, three, four, double the number of hydrogens plus two at the end. So the formula would be CnH2n plus two. So what that means is, that for every number of carbon, so here this would be two, two carbons, we have H2n, so we have two, double the amount of hydrogens, 2n means doubling that number, two times two hydrogens plus two at the end. So Cn, H2n plus two. Whereas if you look at alkenes, it's just Cn, H2n, so it just means whatever carbon, whatever number of carbons you have, you have double the number of hydrogens. But with alkanes, double plus two to account for the tail ends. You don't have tail ends here. Explain why alkanes are described as hydrocarbons. If you have to ever define a hydrocarbon, it's because they are made of hydrogen and carbon atoms, and you get the second mark for saying only. So if you had chlorine or oxygen or anything like that added in, it's no longer a hydrocarbon. So remember that second mark for only. Next, figure eight shows a graph of the boiling points of some alkanes against the number of carbon atoms in one molecule of alkane. So whenever you have a graph, just take time to look at it first before you look at the question. Number of carbon, carbon atoms in one molecule. So as you increase, the boiling point increases. It's not a perfectly proportional relationship, but you can see it's more or less, a, it's a very strong positive trend here. Explain the pattern shown by this graph. So now we have to say, what do we see, what's happening to the boiling point, and give a reason for it. That's where the marks are coming from. And you can see that this is a two-mark question. So, firstly, explain. Well, we can see that, um, basically, the longer a chain, there are more bonds that can form between other chains. So you can see here the green things represent bonds. So, in other words, you'll need more energy to separate out these molecules to overcome the intermolecular forces, okay? Whereas if you have a smaller chain, they're weaker intermolecular forces to overcome because there's just less of them. So firstly, the trend is boiling points of the alkane molecules increase. That's what you have to say. Now you have to give a reason why. Remember, explain means describe and explain. It means say what you see and give a reason. So the reason is, so the boiling point of alkane molecules increases with more carbon atoms because there are more intermolecular forces and that's what these diagrams are showing because there are more intermolecular forces. When crude oil is separated into fractions the amount of each fraction obtained rarely matches demand for that fraction. Figure 9 shows the relative amounts of six of the fractions present in a crude oil 
and uh, the relative demands for each of these fractions. So <coughs> here you can see the demand for the fraction and the amount of that fraction. Cracking is used to match the relative amount of a fraction of crude oil to the demand for that fraction. So for example, if you had a lot of one and a small demand, what you can do is you can actually crack um, that molecule into smaller molecules. It means literally break up long chains to make smaller, more useful alkanes and alkenes. Um, so for example, you can see here the demand's much higher. So you could crack these molecules into smaller petrol molecules and use that to meet the demand there. So it's quite an efficient system. Um, use your information in figure nine to give the name of the fraction that is most likely needed to be most likely to need to be cracked. So the one which is in greatest uh, supply but lowest demand. So that would be fuel oil here. In a cracking reaction, reactants are heated to form products. This is, an en this is endothermic. On the axis provided, draw the reaction profile of this reaction. Label the energy of the reactants, the energy of the products, and the activation energy of the reaction. Now, don't get too worried about this. It's just a term, reaction profile. You've probably seen these graphs a number of times, and if you haven't, they're quite easy to draw. So you have time reaction time here and the amount of energy and this is what it looks like with an endothermic reaction we start off with the reactants having less energy than the products and we need to raise the energy by this much to get them reacting at the point at the tip of the peak um, this is where um, or tip of the curve this is where the reaction starts so this is the activation energy this green line here activation energy this is how much energy we need to input to start the reaction after which energy is released to form the bonds and the products so energy is required here to break the bonds in the reacting molecules and energy is released when bonds form to make the products now because less energy is released only this much here um, is released and that much is required to actually start you're in a deficit, you can see that you'd need this much more energy to start the reaction again. So that means you need to draw energy from the environment to provide that. So this is an endothermic reaction because you give out less heat than you take in to start the reaction. So the energy of the reactants must be lower than the energy of the products in an endothermic reaction. If it's exothermic, the products would be lower than the reactants. And the activation energy is here. It's the difference between where the reactants are and the tip of the curve. Just in case it came up the other way around, if it was a graph to show an exothermic reaction, you have reactants up here, products down there, and you show it this way with activation energy being the distant difference between the reactants and the tip of the curve. Dodecane C12H26 can be cracked to form useful products. Complete the equation for the cracking of dodecane um, by fitting in the formula of the single molecule needed to balance the equation. So if you remember um, the conservation of mass, basically whatever is present on this side in terms of number of elements of carbon and hydrogen, number of atoms, you'll find the same number of atoms on this side. So you basically have to work out what is missing. So here we have six carbons and 12 hydrogens, three times four, three times two, three times two is six, three times four is 12. Here we have 12 carbons, so we're missing six, and 26 hydrogens, so we're missing 14. So basically we want C6 H14, because this plus this will equal the number of carbons and hydrogens. Just take your time and it's an easy mark.